How's it going everyone? My name is Keenan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Have you ever thought about how wonderful your life could be if you just started your career in construction? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're going to be talking about what your career path could look like if you start your career in construction. And this will be from my experience of working for a big general contractor. So I'll go through the progression of each level as you move up in the company. Some expected salaries, at least what I've seen in Hawaii. Some brief roles and responsibilities and a rough timeline of how long it'll take you to get to each level. And if that already wasn't enough fun for you, at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about how starting construction and branch you out into many different career paths. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos about engineering and personal finance and the occasional videos of Hawaii. But I think that this video is best done in a different setting, so to the board. Welcome to the board. So let's get right into it, our path as a general contractor. So if you never had any experience in construction, you're probably gonna start out, or I would suggest you start out as an intern. If you're going to college, this will either be like the summer of your junior year, ideally, so that if you do well in your internship, you can just have a job set up for you uh, at the end of your senior year of college. Or you can do one during the year if you can handle the workload or just having the part-time job with your schooling. But the good thing about being an intern is that it gives you like a really quick crash course if you're going to last in the industry. If it's something that you really want to do, you get to see how other engineers and what their work-life balance is like, if you care about that kind of stuff. And then also as an intern, you're kind of invincible in a way. So what I mean by this is that you can make some decisions and you can kind of go and stretch your abilities. And the worst thing, I mean, no one's really going to blame you for it if you're working for a good company. So you can really get a real taste of what it's going to be like when you actually have your job. So internship, I highly recommend because construction is a kind of tough industry. So instead of just going in blind and getting your first salary job without knowing what's happening, this is a great place to start. So even if you don't have an internship, you still have the possibility to be a regular engineer. Ooh. So some companies may call it like an engineer one, entry level engineer. Uh, my company calls it a field engineer. So when you're an entry level engineer, ideally you're going to be in the field. So if you watch any of my videos, you're gonna know that I really care about understanding this very aspect of being in the field. This is your opportunity from going from the books in school to actually learning how things get done. And you'll be doing this by spending a lot of time outside. You'll be doing some QC, like taking field measurements, checking to make sure the rebar's in the right area if you're doing that. So you're gonna get a taste of all the tools that you need to use in construction and what really good quality work looks like. You'll also probably be in charge of like material tracking and inventory, making sure that what you get on site isn't damaged or it's the right amount. So typically you'll be a field engineer for around like two to five years until you move up. And I think it's very important to not rush this stage because you wanna make sure that you get that good foundation of field knowledge. In Hawaii, for an entry-level engineer, depending on if you're in the building sector, bridges, whatever, on the low end, you'll be making maybe about mid to high 50s to maybe about $85,000 a year. And I know that's a pretty big range, but it really does vary from company to company. So after you get that base, you'll likely be promoted to some other engineer. We call it project engineer. So this will be like an engineer two in some companies, but it's just another step up between like an entry engineer and management level. So at this stage project engineering, which is where I am at right now, you're really starting to dive in and trying to understand which direction you want to take your career in if you're gonna stay within general contracting. So if you spend a lot of time in this field area, it'll help you understand problems at like the project engineer or office level. So you start to do more things like scheduling, cost reporting, submission, Submittal review and RFI reviews. If you don't know what a submittal and RFI is, a submittal is basically something that your subtrade is sending to you and it's some sort of document like some sort of drawing or product data that you have to submit to the owner or the designer for review. You're basically submitting everything that you're going to bring in for the job, making sure that that's exactly what the owner and designers want. An RFI is a request for information, and that's essentially any question that we as a contractor are asking to our design team if there's some sort of clarity that we need from the drawings. You'll also be in charge of change order processing if there's any changes on the job, which there will be. Reviewing contracts and subcontracts, making sure you're starting to understand what's in everyone's deal. Procurement, or essentially making sure that all your materials are gonna arrive on time and tracking them. So, and you're starting to create relationships with other people in the industry on more of like a business level as opposed to just 
handling problems in the field level. So at this point, you should start to be a pretty good problem solver. You should know how different trades interact with each other. And you'll likely be in this job for about two to five years. And what I've seen in Hawaii is that project engineers will make anywhere from maybe about $70,000 a year to maybe slightly above six figures. So now is where things get kind of cool. Right now you're doing a lot of the office stuff and the paperwork stuff on this side and you have a good base for field knowledge. Now you can choose what I believe are the two directions if you're staying within operations of the construction project. So you can go in this direction or this direction of superintendent or project manager. Ooh. So the project manager is more on the what I would consider the money side of the construction project. The superintendent is more on the field side. So from what I've seen, most people that are coming from college and not from the field are more geared towards project management because you just don't have that whole field knowledge of you know actually swinging in a hammer to get things done. But And I think that brings a lot of value to the superintendent position if they've actually built things before. So more people will tend to go the project manager route. And that's where you really need to understand the finances of the job and the risk of the job. So you, you'll be deep in schedule. You have to understand your staffing of your project, how many people you have and how that works within your budget. Your contract, build relationships with the ownership team. And it just becomes a lot more important when you're on that higher level. You'll need to be a better leader and teach the younger engineers or the younger people on your team to make sure that they're doing things in the proper way. And you have to know how to forecast. If the job is going really well or the job is not going so well, you need to be able to understand how to manage your job and know your job enough so that you can figure out how much money you're going to lose or make at the end of the day. And you'll really have to dive into your contract and know all the details of it so you can manage your risk. So you can kind of see why these steps are really important for you to be a good project manager. It's very tough for you to understand schedule if you don't know real durations from the field which you get from this experience down here. You can't teach anyone and build that leadership and relationships with people if the people below you don't believe you know what you're talking about. And you can't forecast either if you don't really understand how to read into the details of the job. And so from what I've seen, project managers likely have roughly about five jobs under their belt, and that roughly equates to about five to 10 years of experience in the industry. And most likely when you get to the project management level, you're making above six figures. On the flip side, you have the superintendent side of things. The superintendent is in charge of all the field operations. So you own the building of the project. You have to manage your crews if you have your own self-performed crews. You have to manage your sub-trades and handle the issues in the field and tie them all to the schedule that, that hopefully you'll be creating and managing throughout the process. And you, may, and you may understand that the project manager is also in charge of the schedule, but ultimately the best schedules are the ones that are created by the superintendent because they're the ones that are supposed to have the good building knowledge in order to be able to sequence it properly. The superintendent also needs to be aware of the contract so they can know what they are held to and what their sub trades are held to when it comes from a field standpoint. And to me, the superintendent is the most important person on the job because they are the ones that have the most responsibility and the most influence on what actually gets put out there on the construction project. And because there's so much risk and they're so important on the job, I've seen that most superintendents, the better ones have at least 10 years of experience under their belt. So you kind of stay in these two roles for a good part of your career, probably about 10 years or so. And a lot of it comes down to what's really available above you because you, at that point you start to get into like real upper management level stuff. So above a project manager would be some sort of construction manager. I've heard the word sponsor be thrown out there but you're basically a big boss project manager. And the field side of that would be the general superintendent. So the construction manager will either be in charge of multiple mid-sized jobs or they'll be in charge of one really big job. The general superintendent is almost the same way, except it's just from the field standpoint. And these people are very, very bird's eye view, overlooking, not in really into the weeds of the job, but they understand where the main risk and opportunities are for each job. And these guys are likely like 20 years plus experience. They're considered experts in the industry and they may even be involved in pursuits for the future. And these guys are likely making upwards of $150,000 a year. And then above this, you can get into like operations, which essentially is overarching for like the entire staffing of the district, things like that. And then from there, you may have district, and then above that, you'll have an area manager who may be in charge of, so like us, we have a Hawaii district, but they might have an area manager, which is in charge of, you know, the whole West Coast. So like Hawaii, California, Washington, things like that. And then above the area guy will be like an entire like building industries manager. 
So there's a lot of steps. If you really want to climb the whole ladder, there's a lot of steps to get there. Most people will be just down in this area over here of project manager and superintendent and still you're making good money at that point anyway. So this is the path if you're just within operations. There's other ways that you can go within the company. You can probably go probably at this stage you'll figure out if you don't really want to be in operations. You can go into estimating which essentially is kind of bidding the job so you'll be more of an office guy looking at numbers, looking at productivities or getting quotes from other subs and, and just basically bidding up new work. You can also go into something like safety if that's more of your passion. You can, and if you really are not into this stuff, there's other things in there you can have. And there's something, I don't know if any accountants are watching, but you can go into accounting and construction. They have marketing, we have HR, we have like virtual construction or like technology. We have a like modeling department, not like, you know, like modeling but like just construction modeling 3d modeling things like that we have it this is just within the construction company all of these areas that you can potentially go to uh, most people if you're really passionate about building the project uh, you'll follow more of this vertical path but there just are other options out there but wait there's more so in the world of general contracting there's a lot of ways that you can take your career and this is why I think construction and general contracting is such a great place to start there's a lot of people that you meet and a lot of directions that you can go that just branch off of this really nicely so one area you start as a general contractor maybe you're in charge of a lot of different sub trades so when you first start out you might be in charge of like the rebar guy or maybe you'll be in charge of the drywall guy the glass guy things like that and a lot of times you'll make that relationship with those people and sometimes you may even like that scope of work. So sometimes some people move from general contracting out to subcontracting. So you'll be working for a specialized trade if you're more passionate about that. So some people are really not into building the whole building. They just only want to focus on like cabinets. One thing to note about this is a general contractor, typically you'll be working on one project at a time. If you move out to subcontracting, some people think, oh, now I only have to focus on one thing instead of like all the different trades on the job. But instead you work on one thing but you're working on multiple jobs so food for thought another direction you can go is design and the reason why i say it's great to start here is because you understand how things get built and that makes you a better designer in any way that you go so you'll likely have to go if especially if you're going to like architectural design you'll likely have to go back to school and get your licenses but at least you have a good foundation an understanding of what is expected out of you as a designer or at least what mistakes and pitfalls that you want to avoid so that you can just be a better designer and it's not just architectural design you can go to structural design or civil design I think it's so much more helpful that you have this general contracting and building knowledge and I think that'll make you a way better design engineer than if you didn't start in contracting another place you can go similar to the subcontract is you can go to your suppliers. So a lot of people may do this if they really don't like the hours of general contracting, or I've seen maybe the same thing like subcontracting, they're just really more passionate about one thing. So you can go work for the suppliers which have probably a little bit less of a demanding schedule. And that's all created by the relationships that you make as the general contractor. Another place you can go is actually ownership. So it's like you hop on the other side of the fence of being a general contractor. So instead of being the contractor that services the owner, you're the owner that has the contractor to service you. So again, I think it's a great place to start in contracting because if you're a developer of a project, having that construction background helps you, to me, be a better owner. You can one, understand what the issues the contractor is going to go through, but you can also know what a good contractor is supposed to do so you can protect the ownership company. You can call out the general contractor because you know what kind of games that you're going to play. So to me, if you make this jump, going from here to here makes a lot of sense. I don't like it when I see people do it because I think general contracting is the best, but it is a way that you can go. There's also people that work for owner's representatives, which is similar to the owner, but just more of like a third party that helps facilitate the relationship between the contractor and the owner. You can also go into like some sort of consulting. Basically having that building knowledge, you can work for some sort of consulting place that you can act as some sort of like building expert or contracting expert. You can go into law. 
So I know you were all avidly listening when I was talking about contracts this whole time. And that's something that people may not understand and realize that you're going to have to get into when you're in construction. Some people may develop a real passion for the contract and I hope will want to go into law so that they can help protect contractors from the big bad other people out there. When you go through when you go through some tough times in construction, you understand how important understanding the contract is and you really get passionate about that, you can go back to school get your law degree, and I think that'll make you a better lawyer if you go into something like construction law, which will always be out there, so it's a pretty good business to be in. And then another one is that you can do your own business, which I've seen a decent amount of people do, and it makes a lot of sense. So being in general contracting, you meet all the different trades and you meet all the different workers from each trade. You play your cards right, you make the right relationships, you can actually create some business partners out of working for a general contractor. You can then do your own business from that and you get the building knowledge and you'll understand what kind of programs you'll need to start up because everything will pretty much already be there for you if you're working for a big contractor. So it's kind of like you can use this as like your crash course and operate as if it is your own business and then you can branch off and do your own thing. There's a lot of ways you can monetize your efforts if you create some good skills in construction. So these, these are just some of the ways that you can take your career after general contracting, and I think they're all really great options, and quite honestly, most of them will pay pretty well. So I really think starting your career in construction, and especially general contracting, opens up so many doors for you in your life. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you and gave you kind of an idea of your career path in construction. If you have any further questions for me, I'd love to answer them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you on the next video.